My dear Junior 4 students, welcome back to our reader, Pirates of the Caribbean. And now we're going to start together chapter five. So please make sure that you have your reader with you. And open with me page 20. Chapter 5, Will Meets Davy Jones. The pirates left Teodoro's house and sailed the Black Pearl to an island. They came to a ship that lay on its side in shallow water. Jack and Gibbs stood under an oil and looked silently at the old broken ship. Is that the flying Dutchman? Will asked. She doesn't look very What's your plan? Jack asked. I'll search the ship until I find your key, Will said. If you find sailors on the ship, Jack asked him. I'll kill them, Jack smiled. I like your plan. It's simple and easy to remember. I'll bring you the key and you'll give me the compass, Will said. Yes, Jack agreed. If anyone catches you, Use these words. Jack Sparrow sent me. He wants me to pay you. Then he added, it will save your life. Will said goodbye and climbed into a rowing boat. So do you think in this part that Jack tricked Will by the words he asked him that if anyone catches him, if anyone catches Will, ask him to say these words. Jack Sparrow sent me. He wants me to pay you, and it will save your life. Does these words are going to save Will's life? We will know. Okay. So they thought that they are going to go on the ship of the Flying Dutchman. Will thought that this ship, the old ship, is the Flying Dutchman ship, but it's not the Flying Dutchman ship. Let's continue together the rest. Jack watched silently. Then he ordered Gibbs to turn on the Black Pearl's lights. and felt very nervous. He asked himself. Suddenly, he heard a noise. Will turned and saw a sailor. He was badly hurt, but he was trying to pull up a sail. Sailor, it's no good, Will said. Water is too shallow. Your ship won't move. But the man kept trying. No. The ocean took Billy and went to the captain's orders. The ship shook, and a dead sailor dropped from the mast. Will saw round red marks on the man's back. He turned the body over. The man's face was gone. Something has eaten him, Will thought. Like a lion. He remembered Gibbs's description of the monster. Will moved away from the body. Okay, so here, what happened? Will was on the old ship, as we, we mentioned before, and he thought that he's on 
the flying Dutchman. But when he started to notice what's going around him, he knew that he may be tricked by Jack. Okay. He saw dead bodies on the old ship. He saw dead bodies. And he saw only a sailor that he was trying to sail the ship, the old ship. So he told him that it's, it's not easy. The water is shallow and your ship can't move. But the man or the, uh, uh, the man kept trying to say that the ocean took Billy and Quentin. And that was the captain's order. When the ship moved and shook, he, there was a dead sailor body which dropped from the mast. He started to look at that dead body. He found red marks on his back. But when he turned the body over, he saw his face is gone. So that means that someone tried to eat his face. We thought at that time who, who tried to eat that man's face? The Kraken, because he remembered how Gibbs described the Kraken or the monster. Okay, let's continue together. Suddenly, the ocean was very calm. Then, very quickly, the wind came and the water turned white and stormy. Will saw a great ship come up from the bottom of the ocean. It was the Flying Dutchman. Jack tricked me, as Will thought. He sent me to this old ship. He knew that Davy Jones would follow me. The real Flying Dutchman was made of pale wood and bones. Animals and plants from the ocean floor covered every inch of it. The Dutchman sailors climbed onto the old ship. Will pulled out his sword and ran toward his rowing boat. Mattis, one of the Dutchman sailors, stopped him. The other sailors joined Mattis and stood around Will. Okay. So what had happened here? Okay. While they were talking, he said that the water was shallow. Okay. And in a while, and suddenly very quickly, the wind came and the water started to return wide and stormy. And then the ship, the Flying Dutchman started to appear to come from the bottom of the ocean to the top of it. So at that time, Will knew that Jack, Jack tricked him because he sent him to the old ship because he knew that Davy Jones will be following him on the old ship. How did he describe the real flying Dutchman. He said that it was made of pale wood and bones. Animals and plants from the ocean floor covered every inch of it. So this is the description of the flying Dutchman. The Dutchman sailors climbed onto the old ship. Okay, so at that when the sailors started to come out, directly with thought of using what? He saw it. And he went to his rowing boat, but he couldn't catch it because Marcus, one of the Dutchman sailors, stopped, stopped, uh, stopped him. And the other sailor joined Marcus. Okay, let's listen to the rest together. Get down on your knees, Greenbeard, another sailor, said angrily. Will quickly pushed his sword into his oil light. Burning oil covered the sword, and Will attacked the sailors. He fought hard, but suddenly something hit him in the face. As he fell, the Dutchman sailors moved toward him. When he woke up, Will was still on the old ship. He was at the end of a line of sailors, all on their knees. Someone walked slowly toward him. It was Davy Jones. Jones was very ugly, with blue eyes and a long beard. His left hand and one of his legs were missing. He looked angrily down at the line of sailors in front of him. Six men are still alive, Marcus said. Jones walked down the line. Do you fear death? 
wants to stay there. I can offer you an escape. Don't listen to him, said another man. He held a cross in his hand. Jones turned and shouted at the second man. Don't you fear death? No, sir. Good luck, friend, Jones said. He smiled, then turned to Greenbeard. Greenbeard threw the man into the ocean. Jones moved close to the first sailor. Life is painful, but you fear death. You can join my ship and escape it. You must spend 100 years on the Flying Dutchman. Will you come with me? The sailor said quickly. I will come with you. Joe smiled. Okay. Let's stop to here. So what happened? We said that the Flying Dutchman appeared and will started to know that he had been tricked by Jack and he started he wanted to fight with uh, make us one of the sa uh, sailors on the, the flying Dutchman but while he was trying to find them hard someone pushed him on his head or hit him on his uh, in the face sorry and he fell when we woke up he was still on the old ship he didn't move to the flying Dutchman Okay, and the sailors asked him to sit on his knees. Someone tried to walk to him. Who was that? He was Davy Jones. Here is the description. The part that is coming is the description of Davy Jones. Jones was very ugly with blue eyes and a long beard. His left hand and one of his legs were missing. He looked angrily at, down at the sailors. So, how does he look like? He's ugly, had blue eyes, had a long beard. His left hand and one of his legs were missing. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you how does he looks like. So, this is how he looks like. This is how he looked like. Okay, so this is who? Davy Jones. And this is how he looks like. Okay, then he starts to talk to the sailors. He asked them, okay, uh, do they get scared from death or do they fear death? But one of them said, no, I don't get feared of death. So at that time, he smiled and he looked to Greenbeard and Greenbeard directly threw that man in the ocean. Then he went into the first sailor and he asked him, he told him, life is painful, but you fear death, you can join my ship and escape. So here he gave him an offer. If he spent a hundred years on the flying Dutchman, then he will, free, he will be free after that. So is he going to accept it the first the, the first sailor, yes. He said, yes, I will come with you. So directly, he smiled and moved to reach the next person who was Will. Let's see what happened when he reached Will. Okay. He stopped next to Will. You are neither dead nor dying. Why are you here? Jack Sparrow sent me. He wants me to pay you. Jones looked very angry. Does he? Shall I accept that offer? He turned his head and looked out across the dark ocean. Okay. So what happened in this part? When he moved to Jack, when, uh, sorry, when David Jones moved to Will, to reach Will, he told him this sentence. You are neither dead nor dying. Why are you here? 
you are neither dead nor dying. Why are you here? So the reply back was what Jack told him. Jack Sparrow sent me. He wants me to pay you. So at that time, David Jones looked to him angry and he, he asked him, shall I accept this offer? That directly he started to turn his head and he looked across the dark ocean. Let's see what happened after. Hiding in darkness on the black pearl, Jack Sparrow watched the flying Dutchman. Jones was looking straight at him. Then Davy Jones suddenly arrived in front of him. Dutchman sailors also flew onto the pearl and quickly circled round Jack and his pirates. It's time to pay me, Jones said to Jack. His voice was low and angry. I made you captain of the Black Pearl for 13 years. Now I want your soul. Well, Jack said, I was only captain for two years. Then my men stole the ship. But you were a captain, Jones replied. You introduce yourself as Captain Jack Sparrow. I've already paid him. I've sent you a soul to work on your ship. He's over there, Jack said. He was talking about Will. You can't send another soul, Jones shouted. One soul is not the same as another. So, here what happened when J uh, Will was talking to Jones, Davy Jones. At that time, Jones moved his head, and in the darkness he showed the black pearl. He pointed his eyes directly to Jack Sparrow, and in a sil in a, in a minute, they he flew directly to reach Jack Sparrow. And the Dutchman as well, the other Dutchman sailors flew onto the Black Pearl. David Jones at that time told Jack Sparrow that it's time to pay me. Okay, because he made, I made you the captain of the Black Pearl for 13 years. If you remember that the Black Pearl was stolen, okay, in the beginning, and that he stayed only as a captain for two years. So he told him, no, I stayed only as a captain for two years because my men stole, my, stole the ship. John replied, but you were a captain, even if you're two years. You, people used to tell you Captain Jack Sparrow and you used to introduce yourself as Captain Jack Sparrow. So at that time, he told him, I've already paid you. Imagine that he treated his friend well, and that was the payment. So he told him, I've sent you a soul to work on your ship. And that was meant to be Will. He told him, you can't send another soul, John shouted. One soul is not the same as another. Let's see what will happen in the next part. Because in the next part, Davy Jones will not accept only will. Let's see. So, how many souls do you want for mine? Jack asked. Three days. Jack gave Jones a big smile. Thanks, friend. Send the boy back to me. I'll start looking for those souls. I'll keep the boy. You must find 99 more. 99? Jack asked, seeming surprised. Have you met Will Turner? He's a good and brave man. His soul is as good as four ordinary souls. I'll keep the boy, Jones repeated. Bring me 99 more souls in three days. Do you accept this offer? Jack 
part of the question. Yes, he answered. This Will Turner is a good man, and he's your friend. Do you want him to stay with me for the rest of his life? Jack was that. Yes, that sounds right. Jack answered with a smile. So, the offer of the payment back that Jack Sparrow needs to pay to Davy Jones is 100 souls. So he told him, okay, did you meet Will Turner? He's brave. His soul is like four ordinary souls. He told him, no, you have to give me 100 souls. I received one, which is Will. So still 99 other souls. And you have to give them in three days. So he was surprised, 99, and in three days, he asked him, do you accept the offer? He said, yes. This Will Turner is a good man, and he's your friend. Do you want him to stay with me for the rest of his life? Yes, that's okay. Jack answered a smile. So even he didn't bother for his friend, and he tricked him, and not only tricked him, he accepted to leave him for Jack Sparrow. At the beginning, he told him, okay, so give me back Will, and I'll get you 100. He told him, no, I will get Will, and you'll get me extra 99. Okay, so even he was tricked, uh, he tricked his friend, Will was tricked by Jack, and Jack didn't even bother himself to get him back from Davy Jones, and he asked him for another 99 souls in three days, and he accepted the offer. So in order to get 99 other souls, what Jack will do? Let's see. He looked down at his body. The black mark was gone. When he looked up, Davy Jones and his sailors were gone too. Minutes later, the flying Dutchman and Will sailed away into a storm. Jack watched silently as the ship disappeared. Three days to find 99 souls. There's only one place to go. Tortuga, he thought. Okay. So, while he was talking to him, and they, okay, they took the decision, or he accepted, um, Jack Sparrow accepted to get 99 souls in three days. He looked at his hand, and then the black mark was gone. You remember the black mark that was on his hand, on Jack's hand, was gone. At that time, he looked up again, and also David Jones and his men was gone. He thought, where I can get 99 other souls? So he said the only place he can find another 99 souls was Tertoga. So he thought to move to Tertoga. Okay, now, We'll start chapter six. Chapter six, Captain Sparrow sails again. Jack sat in a corner of a crowded bar in Tortuga. His feet were on a table and his compass was in his hand. Gibbs was finding Jack's 99 souls. He promised an exciting life on the Black Pearl, a line of hopeful sailors. Because they were in Tortuga, every man was old and sick. I had one arm and a bad leg, an old sailor told Gibbs. We can use you, Gibbs replied. After a few more interviews, he walked over. How many? Jack asked, looking up. With those four, Gibbs said unhappily. We have four. Gibbs was worried. Oh, I don't want anything to happen to me, he added quickly. I'm not making any promises, Jack said. He didn't like promises. Make a new plan, Jack, and don't use that compass. We all know that it hasn't worked for a long time. Okay, so they reached Tortuga, Captain Sparrow sails again, so Jack 
sat in a bar in Tortuga. Okay. And his feet was in front of him. He put it on the table and he was holding his compass in his hand. For sure, Gibbs was trying to find the 99 souls. Okay. So he started to meet people. And because they were in Tortuga, every man there was old and sick. One of the men said that he had only one arm and a bad life. And the sailor told Gibbs that what happened. So Gibbs replied that he can use him. After some interviews, more interviews, Jack asked Gibbs, how many? Gibbs said that they have four. And Gibbs was unha unhappy, feeling unhappy. And he told Jack that he doesn't want anything to happen to him. At that time, Jack said that I'm not making any promises because Jack hates promises. Okay. So Jack, Gibbs told him, make a new plan and don't use that compass. We will, we all know that it hasn't worked for a long time. So that means that the compass is not working. Okay. At the time, Jack felt very angry from Gibbs. Let's see the rest. What's your story? Gibbs asked the next sailor. The man was drunk and unshaven, but his eyes were clear. My story? The man asked. It's the same as your story. I wanted to catch a well-known pirate. I followed him across the seven oceans. I lost my ship, my job, my life. Gibbs looked more closely at the man. Comical? Is this really Thomas Norrington, the man who followed Jack and the Pearl to Ila de Muerta? I'm not a competent clown. He threw his bottle down on the table. So, can I watch on the ship? Gibbs was too surprised to answer. The silence made Norrington angry. Okay. Another man came for the interview. Who was that man? He was Commodore Norrington. Do you remember Commodore Norrington that was following Jack Sparrow and the Black Pearl? Okay, in the beginning. Okay, so he told him, what's your story? He told him the same as your story. I wanted to catch a well-known pirate. I followed him across the seven oceans. I lost my ship, my job, my life so if i asked who said this so it's going to be commodore narrator to gibbs okay and why because he was interviewing him but he didn't know that at the beginning that this is, was commodore narrator and he was making interview to find the 99 swords so gibbs looked at him like commodore is that really you commodore narrington the man who used to follow jack and the Black Pearl in Isla de Morta, he told him, I'm not Commodore anymore. I'm just Narrington. So he asked him, can I join your ship? Gibbs was surprised and he felt silent, but the silence made Narrington angry. Okay, let's listen to the rest. So can I work for Captain Jack Sparrow? Turned to Jack and pulled out his gun. Or shall I kill you now? On his way out of the door, Jack stopped and smiled quickly. You can join us, friend. Norrington didn't put his gun down. Sorry, he said, but I really want to shoot you. Calm down, soldier, Norrington said and held Norrington up. That's our captain. Norrington's gunshot just missed the man. Jack's new sailors had jumped up and started to fight. Other pirates joined the fight. Chairs fell to the floor and bottles were broken. Okay, what happened exactly in this part? When Commodore Norrington asked Gibbs if he can join <clears throat> the ship for Jack Sparrow 
and he didn't reply, he started to be more angry. So he shouted, can I work for Captain Jack Sparrow? And then he, he turned and took his gun out. Or shall I kill you now? And here he meant he wanted to kill who? Jack Sparrow. On his way to the door, Jack stopped him and he said, yes, that you can join my friend. Narrington at that time didn't put his gun back. No, he's still pointing it at Jack Sparrow. And he said, sorry, but I want, but I really want to shoot you. The soldiers started to ask him to calm down and one of them held Narrington's hand and they started fighting and the shoot, uh, the shot was missed by that person. And that's our, he said that that's our captain. Okay. So Jack knew new sailors, the four that already have been agreed on, started to fight because they didn't want a problem to happen to their captain after they found a job. And other pirates started to join the fight. Chairs fell, bottles were broken. Let's see what happened in the rest of this chapter. He walked carefully through the front of the hunter. He picked up a hat from the floor and put it on his head. It was too small. It's hard to find a good hat these days, he said to himself. He and Gibbs walked quietly away. Norrington had a sword in his hand now. Fight then! You! 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 He shouted drunkenly. Then someone hit him over the head with a bottle and he fell to the floor. Elizabeth stood over him, dressed in her sailor's clothes. I just wanted to see you, she shouted. Suddenly, they were standing in front of her. Captain Sparrow? Jack looked at her, but didn't know her in her sailor's clothes. Do you want to join my ship, boy? He said, welcome. William Turner. Elizabeth? He said, looking at her. You don't look good in those clothes. Davy Jones's ship. Davy Jones? He said, looking at her. Ah, uh, please. Oh, the captain of the Flying Dutchman, a ship that takes dead men from this world to the next? Oh, negative, he fancied. He looked closely at Norrington. Oh, I know you. Commodore, you look terrible, friend. Why are you here? I joined your ship. To find Will. Okay, what happened exactly here? When they were fighting, okay, and Norrington was, uh, was trying to kill uh, Jack Sparrow. At that time, someone hit him on his head with a bottle. Okay. Who was that? This was Elizabeth wearing the sailor's clothes. Okay, I just wanted to hit him, she shouted to the pirate. Now throw him out of the bar and we'll have a drink. Then, as the pirates shouted their agreement, she looked carefully at the man on the floor. I don't believe it, she said quietly. James Norrington? What has the world done to you? She helped him to, to his feet. And they walked slowly toward the port. Suddenly, they were standing in front of Jack. Okay. When she hit him, she didn't know that this was Commodore Norrington. 
But when she looked at him carefully, she got shocked because this is Norrington. What happened to him? So she took them and he started, she started walking with him. While they reached the port, they found Jack in front of them. Elizabeth said to him, Captain Sparrow. Jack looked at her, but he didn't know her. He didn't notice that this was going to be Elizabeth. So he told him or her, do you want to join my ship, boy? Welcome. At that time, Elizabeth told him, I want to find the man I love, William Turner. Jack was surprised. Is that Elizabeth? He told her that you don't look good in those clothes, eh? Looks like a boy. So Elizabeth told him, Jack, I know that Will followed you. Where is he? So she started searching for Will Turner. Here, Jack will give her the shock. I'm sorry, but Will has joined Davy Jones' ship. Davy Jones, Elizabeth repeated. At that time, Nottington started laughing and saying, oh, please. And he said this sentence, concentrate on it. The captain of the Flying Dutchman, a ship that takes dead men from this world to the next. Okay, this is how Norrington described the Flying Dutchman and Davy Jones. Jack replied that that's correct. And he looked very close to Ronington, Norrington and he told him, I know you, Commodore. You look terrible, friend. He's, he looks very terrible. Why are you here? He said, I joined your ship. Norrington replied. Jack said, Elizabeth, I want to find Will. So here, Jack, uh, uh, Elizabeth wants to find Will, and she needs Jack to help her for sure. Now let's listen to the last part in chapter six. Jack, let's go back. You sure? Can you, is that what you really want? Of course, yes. I don't know how I could say no. Well, Jack began slowly. There is a chest, a chest of unknown size. Jones will do anything to keep that chest. The chest can save Will. How can we find it? Jack placed the compass in her hand. This, this compass will point to the thing you want most in this world. Jack, is the story about the chest true? Every word is true, love. You want to find Davy Jones's chest, don't you? I want to save Will. Jack opened the compass in her hand. He turned to give it. We go that way, he shouted, and pointed toward the ocean. So, she wants to save Will. So, how can she save him? That time, Jack told her, if you want to save him, you have to find the chest. So, she asked him, is that the, the issue of the chest? Is that true, the story? He said, yes. So she said, how can I find this chest? He gave her the compass in her hand and he opened the compass and then he looked to Gibbs and told him, we go that way. And he shouted toward the ocean. So here, what happened exactly in chapter five and six? Number five, Will joined, chapter five, Will joined the Flying Dutchman after he was tricked by Jack uh, Sparrow and Jack Sparrow has made an agreement with Davy Jones that he's going to find him a 99 souls in three days and the 100 the last he asked for 100 90, he have one now which is Will and he needs extra 99 more and that has to be in three days and that has to be in three days so I so thought 
where I can find the 99 people, he moved to Turtoga. In chapter six, when he reached Turtoga, he started, get started to make interviews for sailors. While he was interviewing people, he met Commodore Noddington. Okay, Commodore Noddington used to, he used to um, chase Jack Sparrow and the Black Pearl. Okay, so he was shot that Commodore Noddington. And then it happened that they fought it together and he wanted to kill, they fought together and he wanted to kill um, Jack Sparrow, but someone hit him by a bottle in his face and when he fell that was who was elizabeth so elizabeth was shocked by how he looks like commodore norrington after that and then she asked jack sparrow about will turner and that time jack informed her that will have joined the flying dutchman and he's working for david jones she asked him how can i help him how, how can i get my love back he told her you have only one way to find me the chest, Jones' chest. And then he gave her the compass in her hand and he pointed, he looked at the compass and then he looked to Gibbs and asked him to go to the ocean. For now, I'm done with chapter five and six. Please read it again. Okay. And hopefully, like, you're going to learn, to know the rest of what's happening in chapter seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11. Okay, thank you for now. Have a great day. Love you.